you are welcome to find the displacement that is needed for this question we will need to resolve the vectors into its components now to get the ball into the O, the golfer takes three strokes the first strokes it displaces the ball six meter knot so we'll have that here six meter towards the knot six meter is the magnitude and then knot is the direction that means it's a displacement a vector quantity now the second stroke let's have the four cardinal points here we have the north the south the east and the west the second stroke is three meters southeast so that means in between this in my video where i talked about resolution of vectors where i solved the particular problem i already talked i already described what southeast means and several things pertaining to that all right you can check the video in the suggested icon up here okay now the second stroke is three meters southeast so we can have it somewhere here this is the cardinal point so the second stroke is three meters southeast this is the east that is the south so if you have it in the middle so that's going to be three meter at least it should be shorter so all right so we have three meters southeast okay the third stroke is two meters southwest this is the south and this is the west so we have the third stroke which is two meters southwest at the middle at the middle means it is dividing it into three meters it, it is dividing it rather into 45 degrees 45 45 since the total angle here is 90 so this is 45 so this is also 45 degrees and this is also 45 because the total angle in that corner is 90 degrees all right so we have two meters here it should be shorter as well but that does not matter now to find the total displacement we will need to resolve all of these vectors into its x components and its y components resolution of vector means splitting vectors into its respective components so i will split this three meter displacement i will also split the six meter i will split the two meters now let's do that so we have the displacement we have the displacement we have the x-axis and we have the y-axis so on the x-axis let's consider the six meter displacement the six meter displacement is only on the y-axis is only on the y-axis it has nothing to do with the x-axis so it becomes zero here since it's only on the y-axis we are going to have six here now let's consider the three meter displacement the three meter displacement it has something to do with the y-axis and of course is the negative y-axis it also has something to do with the x-axis and of course is the negative is the positive x-axis okay so if we resolve this three meter to the y it has something to do with the x and y-axis because it's at the middle so if I resolve this three meter to the x-axis, if I resolve it to the x-axis, I told you in this video that is being suggested up here, I told you that, okay, you have something of this nature. You have three cos 45. Reason it being that there is angle here. If you have an angle here, it takes course if there is no angle it takes sign but we can that's just a trick but we can quickly do it here this is the proof since we have angle 45 degree the end here and we want to find the component on the x-axis we have three meters here so by we can use the soccer to our way 
which is that since we have the adjacent and the hypotenuse so we can say that cos 45 is adjacent x over hypotenuse 3 meter so it implies that x is equals to 3 cos 45 if you are looking for the y if i want to resolve it to the y okay that's why we have 3 here so we can find that of y let me raise x To find that of y, we just need to put y here. So we can use sine instead of cos. Since we have opposite and hypotenuse. So we'll say sine 45 is equal to opposite y over hypotenuse 3. So it means that y is equal to 3 sine 45. So we are going to have 3 sine 45. Actually, you may not need to be doing all of these calculations if you have a problem. But you could just since there is an angle here apply cos if there is no angle apply sine if we had another angle let's say we have let's say we have something of this nature we have theta here if i resolve this vector f if i resolve it to the x-axis it will become f cos theta the reason is because there is angle theta here so it has to take the cos if i resolve it to the y-axis it will become f sine theta that's just the trick all right so let's do that for the two meter vector the two meter has something to do with x-axis and it has something to do with the y-axis since its component on the x-axis don't forget is a negative x-axis so we are going to have the same thing for this 3 meter vector we resolve it to the negative y axis so it should there should be a y there should be a minus here we resolve it to the negative y axis we are about to resolve x to the negative x axis so it should have a negative sign so we are going to have and there is 45 degree in there this minus 3 sine 45 it can also be minus 3 cos 45 because there is an angle here as well sine 45 and cos 45 is the same thing now in this case we are going to have 2 meter cos 45 minus 2 meter cos 45 and also we can have minus if i resolve it here negative axis minus 2 meter cos 45 or minus 2 meter sine 45 this can also be sine the x can also be sine because 45 cos 45 and sine 45 they are the same so i just need to find the summation of the x-axis the summation of the x-axis is the addition of all of the components on the x-axis and this gives me the addition of all of the components on the y-axis so let's do this if you had this so you should have 0 0.707 that's root 2 over 2 and then this you should have for this you should have 2.46 so it's also in meters now let's find the total displacement the total displacement will be given as this okay let me try to erase all of this you see the meaning of summation x is that we have all the axes on the x axis we have something of this nature x the scatter diagram that i drew first of all has now been resolved into only x and y axis and this is what we have 0 0.707 meters towards the positive x axis since it is positive and for this since it is a positive y axis so we move like this positive and the magnitude is 2.46 2.46 so to find the total displacement this is the total displacement of that vector this vector is the total and is the resultant vector so we can we can find it we can find our r which is the total using the pythagorean rule where r is equals to the root 
of 0 0.707 squared plus plus 2.46 squared so if you do this correctly you should have then if you do that correctly you should have 2.55 so meters is the total this is the total displacement of that vector now to find the direction to find the direction of the displacement vector you can simply do this you can simply put theta here. theta shows the direction of r where r is being where r is being positioned from x you can see theta so we can find it using the tan since we have the adjacent and we have the opposite the opposite is 2.46 2.46 meters the angle here and the, the line here the vector here and the vector here, they are the same because they are parallel so we can i can use the tan theta tan theta formula which is opposite 2.46 upon the adjacent which is 0 0.707 which will be equal to which will be equal to 3.46 degrees no 3.48 degrees so we should have 3.48 degrees so the theta itself is the arctan of 3.48 degrees which is equal to which is equal to 73.96 degrees so we can say that theta is added from the from the this is the east you know of course and this is the north so theta is east 0. Point, I mean east 73. Theta is east 73.96 degree north that is from the east you can see my arrow the theta that we found that's how to find the angle is it is anti-clockwise so theta is from the east it is 73.96 to the north that's the meaning of this but i can also rewrite it in another way because most time when we find direction we are pleased with you starting from north so we always use it clockwisely now to use it clockwisely i will do 90 minus angle theta the 90 minus angle theta will make it north that means it will now start from north following the arrow north then the angle then east so let's do some 90 minus theta so 90 minus theta is equal to 16.1 degrees so be mindful of your approximation so we are going to have north 16.1 degrees east so they are both correct they are both correct it depends on your understanding but this is most appropriate because we always desire to start from north when we are talking about direction so if you if you can write this in two ways north 16.1 degree east you can write it in two ways you can also write it as 16.1 degrees 16.1 degrees north 16.1 degrees you are going to the east so that's going to be east of north yes i i told you in this in that video that i suggested earlier on that off shows where you are coming from so 16.1 degree to the east but i'm coming from the north so it's still the same thing as what this arrow is doing here all right so thanks for watching make sure you watch other videos
I'll see you later.